Good morning. It is good to have you here this morning on this. Yeah, winter has come to uh, Great Falls, in case any of you were wondering about that. It's, it's here. It's here. And we could use, I'd, I'd probably get chased out of the building for saying this, but we could use a little bit more snow. Yeah. So today's service, today's service is a little bit different. We are going to be observing All Saints. That's our All Saints recognition. Today, this is when we pay tribute to those who have um, passed away in the last year. And so what that's going to look like later on in the, in the service, after the sermon, I'll be reading the list of names of those who have died in the past year. We'll pause for a moment, Dennis will ring a bell, and then we'll go on and read the next name. After that, we'll have some time when you can come forward. There's a table over here with lots of little candles on it. That's for you to come forward and light a candle for those who you would like to remember today. Um, I don't, we might have enough candles that if you have more than one person, you can light two candles if it looks like we're going to run out let the flame work for multiple people. This is also a place where you can bring your prayer requests. We're not going to have our regular time of sharing joys and concerns. So in your bulletin, you will find a um, small piece of paper. Any prayer requests, you can write that on that piece of paper and bring it forward. There's a basket on the candle table so you can leave those there. They will be um, shared with our prayer chain to be praying for or lifting up those prayers during the, the coming week. Also, we have communion today. For those of you who are watching us on Facebook or who will be watching us on the recording on YouTube, you're invited to have some bread, some appropriate bread and an appropriate beverage if you want to participate in communion. You might also want to have a candle on hand to participate in the service of remembrance as well. Um, let's see, today we have our, the first of our two inquirer sessions. So this is for anybody who might be new to the church, who would like to learn more about the church, who would be, maybe be thinking about becoming a member, or if you're already a member and just want to learn a little bit more about the church, you're welcome to come. We'll be meeting after the service. It'll be about 1045-ish down in the, the parlor. Our fellowship board is going to be providing us with some, with some snacks, some eats. So don't worry, you're not going to miss out on the good fellowship food. There will be some there in the parlor for you. We'll have the second part of those, those inquirer sessions next week. It'll be the same process, different information. So if you're coming, it's helpful to come to both of them. And then we'll be receiving new members on the 20th of November if anybody who's participated in those desires to join the membership. Don't forget we have our Thanksgiving feast coming up on the 13th. That's next week. How can that be? Is that right? It's on the 13th, right? Yep, today's the 6th. Seven days on the 6th, yeah, 13th next week. There's a sign-up sheet um, on, the, on the table in the narthex. It's a potluck-ish. We're asking you to sign up to bring something according to your last name. If the, if the food item that you've been assigned by your last name is not your specialty, I don't think we're going to turn away any food that you would want to bring. So be sure and sign up out there. Any other announcements that we need to make today, that we need to share? It's great to have the Contabile ringers with us today. Yay! One more thing that's back. Well, as we transition more deeply into a time of worship, I, I invite you to settle into this time and into this space. Breathe deeply of God's comforting, healing, empowering spirit and let yourself be fully present to God over over the next hour or so let God speak through the words and sights and music allow yourself to be known by the extravagantly loving God welcome to worship
I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. There are many who have walked the path toward God before us, showing us the way with their lives. As they were called, so are we, to live as Jesus did, answering the call of God, saying, Here I am, send me. We come to ask for guidance and courage. We are each of us, like those who have gone before us, a strange mixture of saint and sinner. God accepts us that way and fills us with the Spirit, who empowers us to act. Blessed us with saints all our lives. Those who put up with us and those who prepared us for discipleship. Those who have touched us with their compassion and those who illumine the way for us. Those who challenge us because they know our capacity and those who hold our hands when our hearts break. Those who have gone before us and those who will follow us in in life life and and faith. faith. As As we we gather gather to give give thanks for for all the saints, we we pray pray for your gentle, compelling spirit to bless our community. In Christ we remember. Amen. So our opening hymn is number 299 in the New Century Hymnal for All the Saints. Ephesians 15 through 23, for all the saints. 
Let us listen to the words of the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the church in Ephesus so many years ago. Hear them anew today from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 23. I have learned of your faith in the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all saints. For this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. That God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above the rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over the body for all things the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the reading today. May God bless our understanding and living of these words. Thank you, Carol. In 1997, I can't believe it has been that long ago, Steven Spielberg's The Amistad was released. Did anybody, did anybody watch that? Few, few people have seen it, yay! Um, this powerful film presents the tale of the plight of a group of Africans that had been abducted from Sierra Leone to be put into the slave trade, and this all took back, place back in 1839. Well, along the way across the Atlantic, the Africans seized the ship killed the captain, and demanded that they be returned to Africa. The ship was eventually captured off the coast of Long Island, and the Africans were imprisoned on murder charges. Eventually, the murder charges were dropped, but the Africans continued to be held in captivity until the courts could figure out just whose property they were. Eventually, the case went all the way to the Supreme Court with the former U.S. President John Quincy Adams representing the Africans with the claim that they belonged to no one as they had been illegally held as slaves. While preparing for the case, Adams visited Singe, the leader of the Africans, and and explained to him that the test ahead of them was a particularly difficult one. Singe's expression turns from one of worry to one of confidence as he explains through a translator that they will not be going in there alone. So I wanted to show that, that clip for you this morning. Of course, you didn't ask to be at the center of this uh historic conflagration any more than I did, but we find ourselves here nonetheless by some uh, mysterious mix of circumstances and uh, now all the world watching. So uh, what are we to do? Huh? What did you say? I, uh, sorry, I didn't catch it. Singe. Look, I'm being honest with you. Anything less would be disrespectful. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm preparing you, I suppose I'm explaining to you that the test ahead of us is an exceptionally difficult one. We won't be going in there alone. Alone, indeed not. No, we have right at our side. We have righteousness at our side. We have Mr. Baldwin over there. Give me Baldwin. Mumma Danimia. Kid Gilimatia. 
I met my ancestors. Ngaye peloti gama. I will call into the past. Nasiati honga wapo. Far back to the beginning of time. Tigba mama. And beg them to come and help me. Jiye jiu. At the judgment. Tau tavala. I will reach back and draw them into me. Jivanya vamia. And they must come. Tiye dunya. For at this moment, I am the whole reason they have existed at all. Oh, I just realized we we lost our setting, so the cove lights are going to flood out the. Um, screen for a little bit. I love, I love the ending of that scene when Anthony Hopson, Hopkins just playing John Quincy Adams just sits there and lets what Singe has said sink in. Well, the case goes on and the court finds that the Africans were indeed abducted illegally and are therefore free to return to Africa. I am drawn to Singe's confidence in his ancestors and the proclamation, for at this moment I am the whole reason they have existed at all. It's an element of African spirituality that is powerful and worthy of consideration calling on the ancestors. Not, not just the spirit of the ancestors, but the actual ancestors, the actual presence of those who have gone before and bringing them into a very real and present force. Well, for the most part, we admire our ancestors. We tell their stories in ways that paint them heroic and brave and adventurous and righteous. We even speak of the scoundrels with a bit of romanticism and flair. All these wonderful and amazing qualities, even if the tales of them are a bit embellished, just become part of the telling of the story. And if we leave it at that, over time, their influence is mostly just in the remembering and maybe drawing some inspiration from them or maybe saying, well, I'm not going to be like them. But what if we were to lean into the thought that their existence continues in us, that we are the reason for our ancestors' existence. And not just that genetic makeup that gives me my once blonde hair and my propensity for ingrown toenails. What if we were really able to call upon our ancestors in a way that they must come? What if we were to set aside our rugged individualism and take confidence in the strength of knowing that those who have gone before us are with us in profound ways? What if we realize that indeed we are not going into this time alone? On the day we remember those who have gone before us, I like to look back at some of those folks who have taught me along the way. The encouragers, the inspirers, the comforters, the challengers, and draw once again from their wisdom and faith, and perhaps from their very presence that I call forth. People like Florence Lynch. 
Florence led the children's choir. I think I've talked about Florence. She'd probably be rolling over in her grave if she knew how often I had talked about her. She was the director of the children's choir in my home church and was always, always on some church board or committee. On the day of my ordination, she embraced me, not only with her arms and her smile, but with words that I will never forget. You see, Florence had grown up in a time in the church when women could do just about any other work in the church but be ordained. As she greeted me at the door to the sanctuary after the service, she embraced me with this admission that she had carried with her all the way through my journey through seminary and, and call to ministry. You have to realize Florence was about this tall and she was about this big around. She grabbed a hold of my arms and she looked me in the eyes and she said, you are doing what I have always wanted to do. Perhaps it is for this moment in my own ministry career that Mrs. Lynch existed at all so that when those times of second guessing my chosen path come, and they do, I can call on her presence for assurance. That which I do with and for you in the name of Jesus is not just for me and you, but for those who have existed before me who have not been allowed to serve as I have, even though their gifts were many. Or I think about my great uncle Andy, who carried with him a gentleness born of consistent and sure faith. And he came from Greece. And after World War II, he carried his Greek Orthodox faith into the United States and then into a very Mormon family as he married my grandmother's sister. And he existed in that culture with a quiet acceptance without criticism while holding fast to the faith that had shaped both his country and his family of origin for generations. So when I encounter diverse expressions of Christianity, I can call on Uncle Andy's presence for quiet courage to help me hold faithfully to the way of Christ, Christ that resonates with my soul. I am humbled to imagine that part of Uncle Andy's existence is what helps me navigate contentions within our faith. Or Scott Libby, a great saint of the church who also happened to be the father of a church member where I served in Iowa. In the early days of the United Church of Christ, Scott shaped our understanding of foreign mission. Our call is not to go forth and convert those of other cultures to our ways of life and faith, but to be in partnership with them in ways that honor cultures and ethnicities and even diverse religious practices. Our call is to learn and grow from and with one another. So when we here, explore ways to serve beyond the church walls, I can call on Scott Libby's graciousness and passion for compassionate service to walk with us in how we reach out in love and kindness. Today is about the recognition of the saints who have gone before us. They are many, and their legacies are rich, and their influence never dies. And if we desire to join with Singe, who might call on them to go with us even now, we are the reason that our ancestors have existed 
at all. So, who are the ones that have gone before you for whom you can rejoice that their reason for existence is for you at this moment? To whom in your family tree do you call upon to give you strength, courage, hope, faith, humility, grace? What saints of the church exist for you to find your better way, your better self in the journey of life and faith? Who will you reach back to and draw into yourself? Do you have a few faces and names that are coming to mind? Yeah. Call them forth. And as you do, I invite you to join with me for this time of remembrance and thanksgiving for those whose very existence is for us today. So let us move then into this time of remembrance. The church has long remembered its saints, those whose convictions have and continue to shape the church and the world. As we celebrate the lives of those who have gone before us, our recognition be expands beyond the church as we remember those who have influenced our lives in any sphere. As we begin that recognition, first the cantabile ringers will move us into a spirit of prayer and there will be a short litany. Then I will read the names of those who have died over the last year. And with the reading of each name, a bell will be rung. And then after all of the names that are included on your insert have been read, you'll have a time when you can come forward, light a candle to remember others who have been important in your lives. And then you are also invited to bring your prayer requests and leave them in the basket on the table. So let us enter into time of prayerful remembrance as we call forth the presence of our ancestors. We remember this day 
those whose journey of life on earth ended during the past year. As each name is read, a bell will chime. May the sound carry our thoughts and prayers for those who grieve. Let us pray. Gracious God, in whom all souls rest, be with us as we remember those who have joined the church triumphant. We call them sisters, brothers, wives, husbands, grandparents, friends, and neighbors. You call them your beloved children. Bill Collins, husband of Gloria Collins. Don Copley, husband of Nadine Copley, father of Jane Suberg. Garth Flohn, son of Peggy Flohn. Diane Gelertner, former church member. Rita Ginter Kushnak, former member. Bern Griffith, uncle of June Rivero. Eddie Kennick, uncle of Janet Kustra. Roger Klein, husband of Marge Klein, father of Kara Dunn. Sultan Diago LeBlond, seminary classmate of Sarah McGilvra Branham. Joan Marinaccio, wife of John Marinaccio. Judy Matson, mother of Joan Daly. Jean Misfelt, mother of Liz Lee. Jody Nordgulen, church member. Carlene Nordquist, niece of Seneva Heipel. Richard Nordquist, brother of Seneva Heipel. Catherine Regali, church member. Don Rivera, father of Amber Heck, brother of Susan Johnson and Sharon Sayer. Nick Routon, grandson of Betty Routon. Gaylene Salonen, member of Christ United Methodist Church. Dave Shiriak, church member. Mary Stromberg.
Betty Walters, mother of Bill Walters. The Reverend Stephen Wilson, fraternity brother of Hank Branham. And Gary Yeager, cousin of Sarah McGilvra Branham. We're invited at this time to come forward and light a candle um, in remembrance of someone and offer your prayer requests.
Let us continue the litany. Holy God of wind and fire, dance through this room today. Holy God of earthquakes and illness, share our tears of sadness and pain. Holy God of creation and new beginnings, show us again your vision of healing and wholeness for all who have died and for all the gifts of new life. We give you thanks, faithful God. Amen. And let us join together in the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes the church is about meaningful rituals and working to bring about the changes of justice and peace. Sometimes it's about helping people grow their faith and helping folks draw from faith throughout life's challenges. And sometimes, sometimes, the church is just simply about creating some fun in a safe atmosphere. That's what happened last week with our Halloween party a time of fun and laughter in a safe place. For the most part, the things that the church is about don't just happen. There's all kinds of planning and prepping and praying and publicizing that are, all, that are behind all of that which we are about. So today, as the offering plates are passed from hand to hand, may they be a reminder of the many hands that bring the ministry of the church to life. And even if you are not placing anything in the plates today, I invite you to take the opportunity to hold them briefly and offer a prayer of gratitude for the working of the Holy Spirit that brings life to our ministries. Let this morning's offering be collected.
Please join with me in prayer. As God's saints in this time and place, we have the opportunity to feed others from the abundance of all we have, to swallow up the pain and suffering of others, to wipe away the tears of children who are lonely and fearful. May the gifts we offer and the lives we lead reveal the one for whom we have waited and who invites us to spread grace over all the world. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. As we move into a time of celebrating at the, at the table. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and on the same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Everyone is invited. Come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for one and all who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and a command in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. On the night on which he was betrayed and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, it is broken for you, do this to remember me. Later after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant with God sealed in my blood. Drink this all of you to remember me and the covenant. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread, give thanks to God, and break it open that all who partake will be made whole. We take this cup and thank God for its goodness and pour it out that all who drink of it will be one in Christ. Please join with me in the spirit of prayer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and cup and fill them with grace and let that same spirit rest on us. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, that we may be salt and light and leaven and further your will in the world. Amen. The United Church of Christ rejoices to celebrate an open communion table recognizing that Jesus is the host and invites everyone to come forward. The ushers will be dismissing you by row to come forward to uh, receive a piece of bread. It's helpful if you open up your palms and just hold your hands out like this and I'll put a piece of bread in them. Eat while you are here at the table and then Greg will be holding a tray of uh, little individual cups of grape juice. Take one and drink while you are here at the table. You can place your empty cups in the bowl there on the stand and um, if you have gluten sensitivities, you get to use the communion lunchables, and if you need help opening those, um, let me know, and I'll be glad to do that. Greg? My friends, these are the gifts of God given for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready.
Let us join together in prayer. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I invite you to stand and let's join in singing Forward Through the Ages, number 377. My friends, let us go into this day, into the future that awaits us, in the knowledge that we do not go into the journey alone. We have the ancestors and the saints of God to go with us, and we have the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to guide and strengthen us. Let us go in peace. And please be seated for the postlude.